Greetings, friends. Welcome to another edition of the Gospel Uncompromised by Minister D. Bush from the Church of God. Church is built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself, the chief cornerstone. Always glad to have the opportunity to come into your homes, into your vehicles, or wherever you might be listening to this broadcast. Now, if you have questions or comments regarding what you hear on this broadcast, you're more than welcome to contact us. You can reach us by email. Email address is ministerdbush at gmail.com or you can give us a call. Telephone number 713-203-3474. And now, listeners, we encourage you to get your Bibles out, grab a notepad and pen, and follow along with us as we see what thus said the Lord. Now, this morning, we'll continue on in our series, uh, how with, with just taking a look at how to keep the devil from getting advantage of us, how to keep the devil from getting advantage of us. And uh, uh, the theme text for this lesson can be found in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and at verse 11. And the word of God says, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, but we are not ignorant of his devices. Now I want you to run over to uh, the first uh, first epistle of Peter, First Peter chapter five, First Peter chapter five, and at verse eight, and the word of God says, "Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour." Amen. So uh, we know and we understand, as we've been looking at over the last couple of weeks, that uh, uh, Satan uh, is our arch enemy. And his number one priority is to get you out of your place with God. We saw, uh, we looked at how he uh, uh, deceived Eve. Uh, Adam and Eve were in uh, perfect harmony with God, but the devil uh, uh, very shrewdly, very cunningly uh, distracted Eve from the blessing that she already had. Amen. And that's what uh, Satan uh, does. He, he paints a false picture. He he said and he uses uh, false advertisement in order to get you out of your place with God. And, and, and we don't want we don't want to lose our place with God. Let's say that you get advantage of us. We want to keep the devil from getting advantage of us. We want to look at uh, uh, Luke chapter four now, Luke chapter four. And we're going to start reading at verse one, Luke chapter four. Uh, and at verse one in the word of God says, and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan and was led by the spirit into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days, he did not, he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered, very hungry, fasting after for 40 days. And the devil said unto him, if thou be the son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. Now here comes uh, Satan. Now he, he uses the most opportune times to try to get to you. He knows when you're at your most vulnerable. And, and he's using the same tricks, the same lies. The Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. See, he, he came to Eve at a moment of vulnerability. And that's how he comes to us. He'll wait till you're frustrated, wait till you're sad, wait till you're lonely. And then he approach you with some illusions of grandeur. But watch how Jesus handles this. We're at verse four now, Luke chapter four and at verse four. And the word of God says, and Jesus answered him saying, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Jesus responded with the word of God. Verse 5 now, and the devil taking him up to, unto a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me and unto whomsoever I I will give will I give it if thou wilt worship me all shall be thine boy there he is he's luring he's dangling the carrot in front of him now, now watch how Jesus responds though you see remember we discussed earlier in this lesson that we should not love the things that love the world neither the things that are of the world now watch this at verse 8 now look at how Jesus responds to this Verse 8, and Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. 
But unfortunately, many of us, we fall for those tricks. We want success. We want uh, uh, material wealth at, by any means necessary. So if we have to violate scripture to get it, if we have to cut corners, if we have to take shortcuts so long as we get what we're looking for. And that's how the devil gets the advantage. At verse 9 now, at verse 9, the word of God says, And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the son of God, cast thyself down from thence. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in that their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. O oh my! Now the devil is quoting scripture. Beloved, you have to be very careful because just because someone quotes a lot of scripture doesn't mean they know what they're doing. Uh, uh, scripture even scripture without the proper interpretation, without the proper revelation is dangerous. Scripture taken out of its proper context is dangerous. And the forefathers of this country used scripture to, to uh, institute the diabolical and wicked and sadistic system of slavery. They went to the Bible to try to justify that. So, so just because someone is quoting scripture, be careful. Doesn't mean they know what they're talking about. You have to rightly divide the word. Amen. See, so now the devil is quoting scripture. I, I, I believe, I, I don't remember exactly which who it was, uh, but I, it, it's either Jim Jones or David Koresh. It is said that they could quote entire chapters of the Bible verbatim, but we know they had it twisted. Now watch this. Watch this. Verse 12 now. We're in Luke chapter 4, verse 12. And Jesus answered and said unto him, it is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. Jesus stood firm. Jesus stood fast on the word of God. That's how you keep Satan from getting advantage of you. You, we know what the word of God says. It doesn't matter what I, I, we can't allow our circumstances to to uh, uh, influence us. Just stand on the word of God. And the Bible says, and when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. He didn't leave him long, alone altogether, it was just for a season. And, amen. And, and you know, he, he'll, he'll, he'll go, but you best believe he's coming back. So we have to, in order to keep the devil from getting advantage of us, we have to stand on the word of God. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, uh, you know, if we lean, lean, lean not to our own understanding and always acknowledge him. Well, we get into trouble when we go to try to rationalize and sort things out ourselves. The Bible tells us uh, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is death. Amen. Now, now, uh, I want you to go with me now to uh, the book of Ephesians, the book of Ephesians. Amen. We're going to try to wrap this up today and hope, I, hopefully I've given you some good ammunition uh, uh, to, to be able to stand and, and, and fight the devil. We don't want him to get, it, get the advantage. That's what he's after. He'll, he'll use any means necessary to try to get advantage of you. Amen. He'll check the door. If he can't get in at the door, he'll go to the window. If he can't get in at the window, he'll, he'll try to get in your spouse. If he can't get in your spouse, he'll try to get in your children. But the well, word of God, the Bible says whatsoever written aforetime was written for our learning. Amen. That we through patience and comforts of the scripture might have hope. We can, we can overcome. Ephesians chapter 6 now. Ephesians chapter 6 and we'll start reading at verse 10. It's Ephesians chapter uh, 6 and at verse 10 and the word of God says finally my brethren be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might put on the whole arm of God that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil against the tricks of the devil put on the whole arm of God for we wrestle not with flesh and blood but against principalities and powers against the rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand the, in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore. 
Sometimes all you can do is stand. Just just get flat footed and stand. You you're getting it from all sides. You 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 you're in hell and in high water. But just stand. Don't buckle. Stand on the word of God. That's how you defeat the devil. In verse 13, the word of God says, Wherefore take unto you the whole arm of God, that you may be able to withstand the e in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore. Having your lawns girt about you with truth. having And having the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate, we want to uh, protect our hearts. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. And above all, taking the shield of faith. Well, with you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. We just saw how Jesus used the word of God to ward off the devil. Amen. And take the, the helmet of salvation. We got to protect our minds. Protect your minds, and, and and then and then what the guy says, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. You can fight the devil with the word of God. You see, Eve allowed uh, Satan to manipulate and twist the word. God has given us the instructions of what He requires of us, and we don't have to fall. We fall when we lean to our own understanding. And that's what Satan wants you to do. To, to, to look at things from through your natural eye. Amen. But, but look, go back to verse 12 now. He said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. It's not the person per se. It's not the person. But it's the spirit that's controlling them. And once we understand that, then we wouldn't lash out so much. We wouldn't retaliate so much. We understand that this person, we, uh, you know, I've, I've learned as, as, as I've grown in the faith. I have a spirit of compassion when, on people when they do me wrong. I feel sorry because they have, they have allowed Satan to get an advantage of them. But now I have to remain calm. I have to remain steadfast. I have to stand on the word of God. I know what God told me just because they are not doing what they should do. That has nothing to do with me. I'm going to stand on God's word. Amen. That's how you keep the devil from getting advantage of you. One final scripture before we close this, this lesson out. One final scripture. I want you to go over to uh, the book of James. The book of James chapter 4. The book of James chapter 4 real quickly. And uh, we'll start reading at verse 7. James chapter 4 and at verse 7. And the word of God says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Amen. Let's read that again. Glory to God. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Verse 8. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. That's how you get the victory, ladies and gentlemen. Submit yourselves unto God, and resist the devil. You don't have to accept anything that Satan has to offer. You don't have to accept it. And he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God. And he will draw nigh to you. Amen. We'll have to leave it right there. We thank you for listening to the gospel uncompromised. We certainly hope something was said to help somebody. Now if you have questions or comments regarding what you hear on this broadcast. You're always welcome to contact us. You can reach us by email. Email address is ministerdbush at gmail. Dot com, or you can give us a call. Telephone number is 713-203-3474. Well, beloved, this is Minister D. Bush inviting you to tune in again next week for more of the Gospel Uncompromised. Thank you for listening, friends. Until our next broadcast, we say unto you, may the Lord have mercy upon you. May you open the eyes of your understanding that you run for your lives. Praise the Lord.